Hello, fangirls and fan guys. I'm Eric Smith, and I want to celebrate the new season of The Walking Dead by sharing with you my favorite non zombie apocalypses. A apocalypse I end of the world scenarios. So, I'm a book guy, so I'm going to be talking about some books here, not TV shows or movies, and no zombies. And let's start with one of my favorite authors, Brian Keene, and the Earthworm Gods trilogy. So we have the first, uh, this is from Deadite Press, readily available, you can pick them up on Amazon. And the first one is Earthworm Gods. Makes sense, right? Then we have Earthworm Gods 2 Deluge and Earthworm Gods Selected Scenes from the End of the World. Um, and what you've got here basically is one day it starts raining and it never stops. It just keeps raining and the waters rise and eventually giant carnivorous worms appear. Uh, and aside from just that, which you'd think would be enough, there's this white fungus that will infect people. There are shark men and a leviathan and killer mermaids and, of course, people. Uh, people aren't very good in, in an apocalypse. You always got to watch out for other people. Uh, I think that's one thing we've learned from watching The Walking Dead. And it applies to non-zombie stories as well. Um... So, Earthworm Gods, probably my favorite Brian Keene book. There's just something about giant carnivorous worms that, that tickle my fancy. Uh, this was originally published by Leisure Books under the title Conqueror Worms, uh, but this edition has additional material, which is why I have copies of both. Um, kind of a two-part uh, story, the first part... We're sort of introduced to the world where the rains have been falling for so long and the giant carnivorous worms appear and, and it takes place on a farm, I'm assuming in Pennsylvania, since a lot of Mr. Keene's stories take place in Pennsylvania. The second part of the book takes place in a big city in a high rise where a group of survivors are just trying to get by, uh, but there's a crazy cult in another high rise that worships Leviathan. Um, and there's killer mermaids here, as I mentioned. And eventually these two stories kind of come together. And Earthworm Gods 2 Deluge follows immediately after Earthworm Gods. We follow a couple of characters and uh, introduced to some new mysteries. More characters are brought in. And all sorts of crazy giant worm white fungus shenanigans ensue. Uh, now, the selected scenes from the end of the world, I really like these. He's done this twice uh, with Earthworm Gods and with his zombie books, The Rising and City of the Dead. And what this is, is a collection of short stories that show uh, what's going on throughout the entire world. And so you get a look at everything kind of from beginning to end, where it all started or where the first incident was, how everything sort of ends for this particular world. Uh, so that's my first non-zombie apocalypse recommendation, The Earthworm Gods Trilogy by Brian Keene from Dead Eye Press. Pick it up. You won't be disappointed. Next, we go from giant killer worms to giant killer spiders. Breeding Ground by Sarah Pinborough and Feeding Ground by Sarah Pinborough. Uh, Ms. Pinborough is an amazing author. Um, she writes some incredible horror, uh, some horrific mysteries, I suppose, just all sorts of stuff. Uh, and everything I've read by her has been great. She's written some um, uh, Torchwood novels i think at least two um but with breeding ground she introduces us to the giant killer spiders uh and feeding ground is not a sequel so much as a companion piece i believe the stories take place 
at about the same time. Um, but with breeding ground, we're in a, I think a small British community. Um, so we're kind of out in the, past the suburbs, even smaller than that. Uh, so we see how things are affected out there uh, as we follow this group of people trying to survive, trying to find a place where maybe the spiders haven't gotten to. Um, and then in feeding ground, this takes place in the city. So completely different cast of characters, completely different circumstances um, than being out in a small town. When you're in the city, things are just completely different. So we get to see how the giant spider invasion uh, affects both types of of people the city people and the country people uh, really good fun creature feature stuff another non-zombie end of the world scenario by an amazing amazing author Sarah Pinborough I would recommend anything by her uh, the only problem with this these were published by Leisure Books which went down the tubes uh, to put it not so politely um, I don't believe I couldn't find any other editions of these books so you're gonna have to find them used they are available used on YouTube I already checked that I do see them at half price bookstore every once in a while so they're out there um, pick them up read them you know this is all good stuff to get you through those that time when uh, The Walking Dead isn't on the air and you want some good apocalypse so Sarah Pinborough my second recommendation number three out of four don't worry uh, it's not gonna be too many this is a book I just finished recently uh, it's the silence by Tim Levin it's from Titan books um, and it just came out last year I believe it's a really really good story um, there's a some folks discover a hidden cave system that has been cut off from the outside world for millions of years and when they break into it they release these creatures that eventually become known as vesps and these are described as being about the size of a small cat they have bat-like wings razor sharp teeth little tendrils on their asses um they're completely blind and they hunt by sound uh, just the slightest sound and they are voracious ravenous they breed like crazy a single vesp can lay up to 40 eggs the eggs hatch within hours the baby vesps can fly as soon as they hatch and these things just start spreading across the world they're destroying cities and we follow Allie and her family. Allie is a teenage girl who has been deaf for a number of years uh, since she had an accident or was in an accident and so fortunately her family knows sign language uh, because they have to keep silent. Um, the first part of the book we're with Allie and her family as they watch the news and they they are hearing about the spread of these vesps as they move out from this cave system in Moldova. They're heading towards Russia, they're heading to towards um, Western Europe. Uh, Allie and her family are in England and they're not even sure the Vesps are going to be able to cross the English Channel but as these things get closer and as they're becoming more and more of a threat uh, Allie and her family decide to pack up and head for an old family's cottage in Scotland. Uh, they take one of their neighbors with them and they hit the road and but at this point everybody's panicking things are going crazy uh, you've got people who are doing desperate things because they are desperate times and then eventually the vesps catch up with them and they have to figure out how to survive in total silence um, if they're walking down the road and accidentally kick a pebble vesps will swarm it's horrifying um, and not only do they have to deal with the Vesps but some people take advantage or at least try to take advantage of a bad situation 
Uh, so they have to deal with people. And there are some literally crazy people that they have to deal with. Uh, but this is just an amazingly well-written, chilling, horrifying story. It's absolutely an apocalypse. Because um, these things spread everywhere. And eventually, you know, you can't go out and fix... Uh, electrical generators or the Hoover Dam or anything so things start to break down and there's no way to fix them because fixing things makes noise uh, so it is about the breakdown of society and following one family as they try to survive absolutely fantastic book highly recommended and non-zombie apocalypse number three finally we have my favorite book of 2015. There's only a couple of months left. I don't think anyone is going to top this. Uh, and this is Tortures of the Damned by Hunter Shea. This was published by Pinnacle. Excuse me, I'm a little itch there. Published by Pinnacle. No crazy creatures in this book. It's completely human. Um, we follow the Padilla family. After someone drops a bunch of bombs and sets off a bunch of EMPs and attacks with biological warfare. Just a, the trifecta, I guess, is what we've got going on here. Um, so with the EMPs, of course, everything electronic shuts down. Um, the bombs, they, the Padilla family doesn't even know where exactly the bombs hit. One would assume they took out some major stuff um in the biological warfare <coughs> excuse me not only is killing people but is driving animals crazy so there's no crazy no bizarre creatures here but there are basically every animal that the padillas run into is out for blood now fortunately for the padillas their neighbor uh ever since 9 11 has been preparing for some sort of attack so he has a big bunker and he's a decent guy he actually prepared it for himself his girlfriend and the padillas and he had some spare room for a couple other people in case anyone else showed up um so this whole apocalypse starts with our main characters in this bunker uh where cabin fever sets in and we realize that one of the padilla children and a young woman that he saved have been affected by the biological agent. Um, and as must happen in this type of fiction, something goes wrong. They're forced out of the bunker. They have to start making their way in the world. And it's a world where, for the longest time, they don't even see another person. So many people killed off by the biological agent. They're, they have to worry about being attacked by rats, birds, cats, dogs again any type of animal um, and as I mentioned with the last book you're gonna have people that take a bad situation to make it worse by trying to take advantage of it they run into those types of people they do run into a few decent people but I think the thing that I like the most about this is that the Badillas are just good people um, with The Walking Dead we see our main characters are a real mix and you've got uh, you know the people you want to see survive you have the people you want to see bite the dust um, with this book with the Padillas and their neighbors they're decent people in a horrible horrible situation you don't want to see anything bad happen to them but you know that it will because it is a horror novel it's a post-apocalyptic novel and it just it hits you right here because they're they're people i think you're going to care about um so that's that's one of the reasons i love this so much plus hunter shea is just a fantastic author um this book's over 400 pages but you can fly through it the chapters are really short which helps keep the pace just going and going um even the the quiet moments between disasters uh move along as you get to know the characters and care about them 
Uh, and that's, that's why this is my favorite book of the year. And my number one recommendation for non-zombie post-apocalypse fiction. Uh, so there you have it. The new season of The Walking Dead has started. I know we're all excited about that. And, uh, but it's only on once a week. And they're gonna, you know, they're gonna have that big break in the middle of the season, and then the season's gonna be over before you know it, and you gotta wait for the next season. So pick up any of these books to get your apocalypse fix. Um, Brian Keene, Sarah Pinbro, Tim Levin, Hunter Shea, all fantastic authors. Uh, I recommend anything they've written, but we're talking end of the world scenarios. It's tough to get better than these four. Uh, so that's it. I'm Eric Smith reporting from the edge of the world for Fangirl Magazine, and I'll see you next time.